Isaiah deserves a special place of distinction among the biblical prophets. The son of Amos, he is often thought of as the greatest of all the writing prophets. In fact, Isaiah's name means the Lord is salvation. His ministry began in the year that King Uzziah died, which was roughly 740 BC. And the book of Isaiah is often described in the context of having two halves, chapters 1 through 39 and chapters 40 through 66. Many of the later themes in Isaiah's writings center on the unification of God's people, especially in Babylonian exile. But one central theme rings true throughout the entire book of Isaiah, and that is that God's redemptive judgment and salvation. 26 times throughout the book of Isaiah, God is referred to as the Holy One of Israel. And Isaiah appears to be speaking prophetic warnings to the Israelites in his writing. Isaiah is imploring God's people to repent and turn towards God's commands. See, God must punish his disobedient subjects for their wickedness, but then he will redeem them. Isaiah prophesies what will happen to the Israelites in chapter 3, detailing the destruction of warriors and officers in those days, all the people of the Israel alike. In verse 5 it says, People will oppress each other, man against man, neighbor against neighbor, the young will rise up against the old, the nobody against the honored. And later in verse 8, Isaiah writes, Jerusalem staggers, Judah is falling, their words and deeds are against the Lord, defying his glorious presence. They parade their sin like Sodom, they do not even hide it. Woe to them, they have brought disaster upon themselves. Isaiah continues on to describe the sins of the Israelite women as well. And in chapter 3 is very descriptive about the violent and the disgraceful fate that awaits those who forsake God's righteousness. But in chapter 4, we see a very different tone in Isaiah's writing, one that's actually more redemptive. Isaiah explains in chapter 4 the sanctification and the deliverance that awaits for those in God's people who return to his ways and remain faithful. In verses 2 through 6 of chapter 4, it says, In that day the branch of the Lord will be beautiful and glorious. Those who are left in Zion, who remain in Jerusalem, will be called holy. And he goes on to say, The Lord will wash away the filth of the women of Zion. He will cleanse the bloodstains from Jerusalem by the spirit of judgment and the spirit of fire. Then the Lord will create over all of Mount Zion and over those who assemble there a cloud of smoke by day and a glow of flaming fire by night. So what is the application of Isaiah 3 and 4 for our own lives today? See, sometimes it becomes easy for us to forget the glory and the righteousness of Almighty God, even as His own chosen people did in Isaiah's day. We allow our vanity and our desires to cloud our judgment and we end up straying from God's perfect calling. Just as with the Israelites, selfish human pursuits often lead us to destructive patterns of behavior, and thus God's righteous rebuke is necessary. But when we persevere, when we stay firm in God's love and His guidance, He provides us shelter and shade that delivers us from destruction.